gentlemen, time to gather around for a story and learn about the entity known as the Daddy. The Daddy is a wicked entity and is a truly repugnant being that resides within the eerie halls of the Necro Asylum. Its Latin name, Abonimus Patrice, alludes to its monstrous nature and twisted lineage. This entity is a sight. It is truly a sight that instills horror and revulsion, boasting a disgusting and necrotic dad bod that has decayed and festered over time. Its foul appearance is a testament to the decay and darkness that permeate its existence. You know you see this entity when you see a towering form that seems to be in a, a, an opposing presence and have a prominent, obscenely large gut that protrudes outward, sagging and distended as if filled with vile secrets. Oh, yeah. You know you're near this daddy. When you feel the presence of a ghost girl named Grace, you may even see her. Now, the information gathered about this ghost girl is that she's a victim of the daddy's abuse, but she is afraid to see it. Another strange thing about this being that truly separates it from other abonymous patri is there seems to be another organism entangled with it. You see, there is a disturbing and grotesque anomaly that is protruding from his shoulder. And this thing may be another life form, it, grotesque and twisted. It seems of a natural growth. And some wonder if it could actually be the brain of the dead e uh, organism entity thing. Now, there's a lot of history with this organism. Throughout the sinister history of the Necrosylum, numerous accounts of encounters with the daddy have been documented. Witnesses describe a chilling glimpse of this abomination after seeing a ghost girl run down the hallway. That would be that grace girl. How could they, of course, recoiled in terror from its repulsive form? Now, there is a very noteworthy story of the daddy being spotted outside the Necro Asylum. So, take this as cautionary, okay? The tale goes like this. There was a nurse working a late night shift at a psychiatric hospital for adolescents. And during this shift, during this shift, my friends, she encountered the daddy. The encounter left her traumatized as she bore witness to its abhorrent appearance and felt an unyielding presence of evil that seemed to emanate from its very being. Now, I should say, this story may trigger some of you guys. Ladies, actually. Or the daddy overpowered the nurse, if you know what I mean. And she became pregnant with this child. The daddy haunted her day and night. And she couldn't tell anyone. She couldn't tell anyone anything about this. For those that she did tell, couldn't see the dad and thought she had gone mad. So who would believe her? And the daddy would torment her by demanding that she kill herself to abort the child. With nowhere to go and no escape from the dad's constant yelling and demanding of her self-deletion, she was driven to stab herself in the neck and die. Now, I will share with you this story of how this organism was discovered. Not too long ago, actually, 
there was a secret collaboration between an undisclosed organization referred to as a Redacted Company and a prestigious psychologist. His name, of course, is Redacted as well. There was a mission. A mission was undertaken to investigate the paranormal occurrences within the foreboding walls of the Necker Asylum. By the time the daddy was discovered, the company had already become a bit familiar with that horrid place. There was already a structure within the organization to um, more efficiently investigate these phenomena. So there's analysts at the company or scientists at the company that would uh, collect extensive information from various sources. And those sources told of a strange occurrence at an orphanage in Rhode Island. And through analyzing the data, they found reason to believe that the location acted as a bridge between our world and the Necro Asylum for some reason. By this time, the company had also learned that they cannot rely solely on traditional weapons as it seemed to bring more unnecessary attention to the crew. Through trial and error and uh, um, lots of loss or attrition, uh, the company learned that it is a good idea to send someone that is skilled in exploring complex emotional issues, hence a psychologist. Turns out, maybe some of the souls, the damned within the Necro Asylum, maybe in prison because of uh, past trauma or conflict. So go in there with someone who can talk to them about it instead of just guns blazing. <laughs> okay. Well, the team, being well-versed in supernatural investigations, braced themselves for the unknown as they stepped into the depths of the asylum. Now, upon their arrival, the field operatives sensed an eerie atmosphere permeating in the air. Okay, indicating the presence of a potent supernatural force. Strange occurrences such as flickering lights, disembodied whispers, unexplained shadows only heightened their anticipation of the horrors lurking within. The operatives at this time received a message from Redacted Company that their identified target was near. With this in mind, the team pushed through the darkness to find a child sitting on the floor. Their target. At least, they thought. The child appeared to be a little girl dressed in a white dress. Though she seemed really real enough to touch, I uh, there appeared to be a faint layer of shadow over her. The psychologist uh, was instructed to do his thing. And he attempted to make contact with his apparition. And uh, though the child had initially resisted, the psychologist's persistence and empathy melted through her resistance. The child looked up at the psychologist and he immediately felt the pain her eyes projected. And before he could say a word, the girl surprised him even more by smoking a cigarette. This girl could be no more than nine years old. So... How is she smoking a cigarette? There must have been some trauma in her life. This must have been a characteristic of how, how she was when she was alive. Um, so the psychologist took a mental note of this and proceeded to ask it questions. He learned that the girl's name is Grace and that she seemed to be caught in a cognitive dissonance regarding what abuse is, uh, hinting that someone had done something horrible to her, perhaps a parental figure, and she would deflect with word games and sophistry while this was happening while the psychologist was collecting information from the girl searching for her, her source of conflict the atmosphere around began to shift you see the eerie atmosphere slowly turned uh, sinister with a reddish hue rising from the black floors the scent of stale water and rotten wood around them uh shifted to that of rotten decay. That's when the girl said the phase of a phrase, my bad. He's here. And ran away. The psychologist, you know, caring for the girl, tried to run for her, but a field operative grabbed him, pulling him back. The asylum is not a place for lone wolf behavior, especially for an unarmed psychologist. That's when he arrived. 
in the heart of this chamber. The operatives became face to face with the grotesque entity. Their rifle mounted lights casting eerie shadows across its necrotic dad bod. The daddy's presence exuded malevolence. And its enormous gut seemed to pulsate with an unholy energy. Though these operatives are trained, fear did grip their hearts as they witnessed the abomination. And they knew that a battle for survival had just begun. But the psychologist asked for time. The psychologist attempted to reason with the entity to the field operative surprise. The entity seemed willing to engage in verbal exchange. An entity began ranting about how he's not the victim and that the girl asked for it and that the girl, uh, let me say, tempted him. The psychologist learned a lot from this exchange. It became more and more disgusted as the conversation went on and the team, uh, let's just say, they learned about unspeakable horrors that the daddy had inflicted on numerous people, not just Grace. And the field operatives have become, at this point, ready to just open fire on the monstrosity. Just, just shred him, just put him down in this place. But the psychologist motioned to give him more time. He, he wanted to hear more. Actually, what he wanted to do was see if he can entrap the daddy in his own twisted logic, which he did. That realization caused the entity to go into a full-on rage. Now, while the operatives really wanted to quickly lay down this entity, thinking it was going to be easy, it was not, my friends. Sadly, it was not. The operatives fought desperately to repeal the daddy's onslaught. The psychologist, of course, stood behind them. And the daddy's twisted appendages lashed out, clawing at their ranks, leaving a trail of injured and incapacitated comrades in its wake. The operatives scattered for defense positions. Meanwhile, the daddy released a painful groan. And a head burst out from its right shoulder, just right through. And the head continued to grow from the body's shoulder, expanding like a growing tumor with tiny arms. This grotesque monstrosity played as a pinage. It was capable of making sounds. It screeched. It released a screech. A screech so powerful it sent many of the field operatives down to their knees. Weakened, Daddy attacked, inflicting good damage. Their numbers. But this brutal encounter, my friends, this was a very brutal encounter. And each passing moment brought the realization that escape would be a harrowing feat and the chances of survival grew slimmer. Now, amidst the chaos and terror, I'll, let me tell you, the field operatives exhibited immense bravery and determination. Their numbers dwindled, but at every sacrifice, they inched closer to freedom. Through clever tactics and resourcefulness, the remnants of the team managed to create a diversion. Buying crucial moment, buying a very crucial moment to flee the clutches of the daddy's domain. The team was able to escape the Negro Asylum. And they carried with them scars of the encounter. The traumatic experience would forever haunt their memories, serving as a chilling reminder of the horrors witnessed within those forsaken walls. Despite that tragedy, though, despite the loss, their mission had shed light on the existence of the daddy. And their sacrifice was not in vain as the information gathered would contribute to further investigations and aid in unraveling the secrets of the Necro Asylum. That story about the nurse that was also obtained from one of these missions. So don't think these missions in in vain. Though there's 
often a lot of loss. It's just a very, very risky thing. Um, from what I understand, the field operatives were are paid pretty well. It's a high risk job, but then again, there's not a lot known about the company, um, so there's that. So, ladies and gentlemen, one thing I want you to take away, very important, and I hold near and dear to your hearts, is that one of these stories. One of them is of a sighting outside of the Necro Asylum. This daddy entity has found a way, has found a way to slip in and out of our reality. Maybe other entities can do that too. I believe from previous, previous accounts of other entities, uh, I think they can actually. Just be careful. Y'all try to take it easy.